Well, hello, friends. This is uh, Davey here at Detune Outdoors, and uh, I'm going to start bringing you the, the Walk to Work series. I've been doing such a thing on my personal page for a while on Facebook, you know, on and off, and uh, decided I should be doing it for uh, the outdoors page, and we can talk hunting and fishing and all that good stuff, everything that uh, I'm into. Uh, if you know me, or follow me at all, you know I'm pretty much everything outdoors I can get my hands into. Uh, hunting's definitely my number one passion though, so you will be seeing and hearing a lot more hunting than everything else, of course. But uh, yeah. that said, today, as I'm making my way to work, we're gonna talk about broadheads. And uh, I'm gonna give you my personal uh, top three criteria for broadhead. I think most people will agree um, that uh, these three things are very important. The order in which definitely can be debatable, but, uh, but here we go, we're gonna talk about it. Oh, and first off, you gotta realize too that uh, this is my opinion and it's coming from me, which means, you know, I'm short, I don't have a long draw length, I'm not pulling tons of poundage and I'm shooting traditional bows. So my needs are gonna be way different than somebody with a with a compound because uh let's face it you know with the compounds and the crossbows you got way 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 more raw energy than they do with the traditional stuff and uh, especially you guys with long on the compounds with the long draw links you just have an advantage there so yeah you can blow a huge expandable head through no problem so that said this is all just opinion but uh i think no matter where you stand i think these three things are are uh, gonna fall true for most everybody's thoughts so my number one is accuracy if i cannot put that arrow in the place i want to put it every single time the other two things don't matter and i can't can't do it you know so you know it, luckily today you know, the designs and with manufacturing and the materials we got and that's not a problem in most cases as long as you get your stuff tuned up so but it's got to go where i want it to go number two is the sharpness of the head and i'm not talking even out of the pack sharp or as sharp as you can get it resharpen it yourself what i'm talking about is when that arrow hits the deer or whatever and we're going to talk mostly deer today because well that's by far you know the most uh, what everybody in the states bow hunts and and what I do too so that's what I'm kind of pertaining to but it all applies but uh, the sharpness when you hit an animal it's got hair it could have dirt and mud and stuff in that hair so you're cutting through all that right off the bat and uh, excuse me <laughs> I'm make sure I don't get run over but uh, you got to cut through that stuff first so you're already starting to dull the blade you know before you even get close to the internals and then there's all these muscles you know around the front shoulders it doesn't matter what kind of animal but there's various thin but very tough stringy muscles that lay flat against the cavities and they kind of overlap each other and they go different directions and that's a whole another barrier and it doesn't sound like a lot because you're not talking a lot of thickness but you still have that so by the time you went through the hair and the hide in that muscle and you're just getting to the rib cage now you got to punch through that that rib cage which isn't a problem even for low poundage setups but but you get through that that's a lot of cutting yeah you know, i know things are moving quick you know so that applies in there but that metal that that head's made of needs to or your whatever head even a stone or whatnot they need to retain the edge into the vitals ideally all the way through the animal get a minimal to the other side you know when you hit the rib cage going out you still want to blow through but uh so it needs to be sharp through them vitals that makes a huge huge difference you know i know you can grab shit no cut no bleed but the sharper you can get it the more minuscule on a microscopic level that you can cut arteries and, and tissue and yeah, that makes it bleed so that's important and number three goes hand in hand with that too for me is structural integrity that head bends folds rolls you know whether it's the ferrule or the blades or whatever doesn't do you no good it's robbing all your energy so I know there's a lot of other factors you know you can talk about uh, 
two, three, four blades, um, mechanical, six blades, replaceable blades, and you can go on and on. Those are moot, especially in the compound in the crossbow world. It don't matter. Pick one and go. Whatever you have the most confidence in is what you should use. What you kill with all the time, that's what you should use. But the fact is, there isn't hardly any heads out there that uh, won't get the job done on a whitetail at this point. So my top three things again, once again, are accuracy, sharpness, the retention especially, and number three, structural integrity. So for me, as far as design goes, of course, you know, this year I'm gonna be shooting 42 pounds at my draw length out of a longbow. That arrow is gonna end up being about 500-ish grains. Um, not a huge FOC. I'll probably end up around 15, 14, 15. And uh, I'll be traveling in the 165 neighborhood, 160, 165 estimated, you know. Um, so am I going to shoot right off the bat, the far extreme, am I going to shoot a three blade uh, Grim Reaper Whitetail Special? No, <laughs> of course not. I'm not going to shoot any mechanical head um, am I gonna shoot a three blade cut on contact maybe could I shoot a four blade yeah what I have and I'll probably use on a conservative end is I have some Tusker spirit broadheads um, they're glue-ons at 120 ish grains a piece before you sharpen them and, uh, and they need a lot of sharpening and the steel is really hard too but uh, that'll all went real well but they're an inch and an eight right hand uh, bevel single bevel and I put a Zwicky hollow point 5 16 adapter in it and it's gonna finish them out right about 150 and so I might go that way I'm kind of leaning that way we're gonna see I gotta sit down and do all the tuning and all that but uh, that all kind of said do you need uh, you know $125 $100 for three head tool steel broadheads for whitetails no you don't does it hurt oh absolutely not and if you don't mind digging in the pocket by all means that's the way you should go those heads there's all sorts of them out there you know they're out of various like high-end steels especially the single bevels that goes back to the integrity and the edge retention like an s7 tool steel is going to retain the edge tremendously much better than a 440 stainless i mean that's just packs it's better steel so do you need them no uh as long as your arrow is you know as long as your arrow is sharp like stupid sharp and it flies where you want it doesn't crumble up and on white tails luckily they're not that tough until you you know start hitting some bad spots of course and that's where the plan b stuff comes in but i don't know i've always been one to weigh in balance um i don't go either extreme generally I like a nice solid middle ground and with a nice solid middle ground you kind of get the best of, of everything so that's where i kind of tend to wait but uh but yeah but i mean like i said if you uh you got a crossbow you got a compound you know and you're you're throwing energy you know the numbers you know up into the 60s 70s and 80 foot pounds even more on some of them crossbows Pretty much pick what you want to shoot and go shoot it make sure it hits where it wants where you want it and make sure it uh is sharp you're gonna kill a deer